I'm going to talk on what I've termed keep your heart in the word of God. Keep your heart in the word of God. You see, everything that we do, the heart is important. The heart is the place from which issues of life, you know, stem out of. And so whatever we experience, whatever we go through, we need to keep our hearts in the word of God. And so we're going to look into that. And before we get into what God has prepared for us, I just want us to turn our Bible to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs 4. <clears throat> I want to read from the verse number 20. Proverbs 4, the verse number 20. My son, attend to my words, incline thy ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thy eyes, keep them <clears throat> in the midst of thy heart, for they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. The verse 23, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. You see, here is a, it's an instruction that God is actually given to us, the believer, because he actually addressed the sons. And today, you and I, believers in Christ, we have attained to this glorious statue, which the Bible refers to us as the sons of God. And so God is speaking his words to his sons. God's saying is towards his sons. The words of the Father are towards the Son. And so when we understand that God is not speaking to another species, He's not speaking to His servants, He's not speaking to sinners, He's not speaking to those that He doesn't consider worthy. God is speaking in this dispensation, in this generation that we all find ourselves in. In the post-resurrection era, God is speaking to his sons. This is the first place that every believer must come to in terms of his understanding. That God is not addressing your wretchedness. He's not addressing your unworthiness. He's not trying to speak, you know, in terms of divulging your mistakes and your sins and your fallenness. No, God specifically is speaking to his sons. And who are the sons of God? The sons of God are the heirs of God. They are those who have received the spirit of the son. Because the Bible tells us because we are sons, he has sent the spirit of his son in our hearts. And this spirit is crying, Abba, Father. In other words, today the God, God Almighty, the creator of the universe, he has become our father. He has revealed himself to us, not only as our creator, not only as the creator of the universe, but as our father, the one who has given birth from within himself, within his own essence, and has given birth to us. So, the, 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 the Son, when we refer to the Son of God, we're making reference to the Beloved, the one in whom the Father loves. The love of the Father is towards the Son. So, standing on this position today, you need to know that you are the hands of God. So, everything that God has, you know, God has given or God has created is towards us. It is for us. And so all that we God has, God has made available to his son. Glory be to God. So the son also here is a reference to the one who has been justified. The one who has been rendered and declared not guilty, not condemnable, not blameful. And this we need to get to. Our awareness, we need to come to that place of realizing that this is our position and God is speaking, his word is towards us. Glory be to God. You see, the, the son is the one who has been reconciled by the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
The Son is the one who has been brought into the place of joyfulness and peacefulness. Why? Because everything that God has purposed for man, He purposed to His Son. And if you've come to the, if you awaken to that realization, to that, you know, awareness, you then real, then you then walk with joy and peace because you know that all things that God created, they are available for our benefits, for our um, enjoyment, for our pleasure. And this is the reason when Jesus Christ, the patent son, when he was baptized and he came out of the water praying, the Bible says that the heavens opened and the Spirit of God descended with the voice of the Father. And in that voice, it was audibly heard by Christ that you are my son, my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. So we are that very sons of God, whom the Father is well pleased. Why? Because we are the son in the son. And so we are in Christ. This is the signature of the gospel. The signature of the gospel is that we, the believers today, who have accepted Christ as our life, we are the Son in the pattern Son. So we have then become eligible. We, are, we have become those who have been qualified to deserve all that which Christ, the Son of God, deserves. So everything that is pertained to Christ is also attributed to us. This is the glory of our position. But that is not the end because it is a position that is not changed because it is that which God himself operates. It is the operation of God. It is not by our works. You know, our sonship is not by what we did. It is not by what we can do. It is a position solely placed upon us, imputed upon us by the work of Christ. What Christ Jesus the one who represented all men, what he did in his death, in his burial, and in his resurrection has given us the position of sonship. So it is not our doings, it is not what we can do, it is not what we may even want to do in the future. It is a position that God has placed upon us based on what he himself did by his son Jesus Christ. But this position, the Bible tells us that in order for us to live in this world, we have to attain to the words of the Father. Now, this is where you know the sons now comes into um, uh, an urge. That there is an urgent place upon the son for the son to hearken unto the words of the father, because the life of the son is the very life of the Father, and the life of the Father is His words. So in order for the Son to live the life of the Father, He has to hearken unto the Word. And so here we see in this wonderful instruction given to the Son by the Father in these wordings of Solomon. He says that, attend to my words, attend to my words. So the words of God are, that are all that which the Father has purposed, the Father has already ordained, the Father has already established that the Son will walk in. And so the message of the words is what the Bible refers to in this generation that we are as the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news of Christ Jesus concerning his person, concerning his attributes, concerning the things that he deserved. So that is the content of the gospel. It's all about Christ. And that is what the Bible refers to as the word of God, because Jesus Christ is the word of God. And so the sons, the believers in Christ are called to attain, to attain to the word to attend to the gospel, to attend to that which the Father has already established. He has already made true. He has already placed as 
a certainty, an actuality, a reality that we are called to walk in. So he said, incline their ear unto my sayings. Unto my sayings. This is very important. You see, we live in a world, you know, where things are changing. But at the same time, we are in God who is dynamic. God is not static. The thing that has been established, they are continually in a position of movement. You see, the Spirit of God, whenever the Bible talks of the Spirit of God, he's talking about movement. He's talking about something that moves. And so the sayings of God is actually what the Spirit of God is continually saying to us at every moment. Right now, God is speaking to us. God is giving to us information that we need in order for us to live as sons. And so it is very important for us to understand here when he talks about our inclination, our ears inclining to his sayings. It is just a reference to Jesus. If you all remember in Matthew 7, the verse number 24, Jesus says that whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, you see, Jesus is speaking. He is speaking right now by the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God who is in us is continually speaking. So Jesus says, Whosoever heareth the sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man who builds his house. He builds the place in which he lives in. The place in which he puts his attention on on the rock. So he calls the content of his sayings. He, he talks about the information that comes from the word of God as a rock. So here we then realize that there are two sources of information. There are two sources of thoughts that actually builds up a man. But as a son, the Bible is making us to understand so clearly that the information that we need to hear does not comes from the external world. It does not come from the things that happened in the external world. Our, our strengths, our abilities, our capabilities is in the insight, is in the world of, of, of God, where Christ himself is the Lord. And so as a believer, we are to incline our ear unto his sayings. And where is he speaking? He is speaking from within us. So here now we then realize that our attention is to be directed in the inside, in our inside, to hear the voice of the Spirit, to hear the word of God, to hear that which will bring us to that place of tranquility, that place of joyfulness, so that we can navigate in the world of temptation unhindered, unstopped, and victoriously. So this is actually this glorious understanding that we need to come into and to realize that this is that which will establish us. So the other point we need to get into is the word attend. You see, it's actually, a, it's actually the word is a now attention. So here, Solomon is telling us that our attention, our attention should be on thy word. You see, this is where the key of the whole thing is. You see, where your attention is, that is where your interest is also. You can't, attend, you can't be attentive to something that you have no interest of. You see, many people, they don't understand they, or they, they don't realize why they should place their attention on the word. Because they cannot derive from the word that which will, is of importance to them. So they are then distracted to look into the outside and think that the things that are outside, the things that others experience, good or, I mean, bad, is that which man is destined to experience. But God has shown to us through the word of God to realize that that which is to place the heart of man 
in the place where God purpose is always that which is in the inside, that which is of the word of God. And so it is very important to then place your interest, your interest, your importance, you see, on that which is heavenly. That which is heavenly. This is very, very important. We attend to a thing in which we are interested. So if you are interested, if your interest is in the word of God, that is where your attention will be. So as a son of God, you see, God wants us to attend to his word. So the first thing that we must come to establish ourselves is, in, is that it is the word of God that builds our hearts. It's the word of God that keeps our hearts. It is the word of God that gives us success. And it is the word of God that establishes us in everything that we do. So this is the first thing we must get ourselves established on because interest is the cause of attention. Where there is no interest, you cannot place your attention on. And so here, God is calling us to put our attention on the Word of God because behind every act of attention, it, there is a motive. There is a motive behind every act of attention. Why are you attending to the Word? What is the motive? What is the purpose? What is the interest? What will you profit? What will you benefit? You see, until you know that, until you actually have a revelation of that which will in, that which will benefit you, that which will profit you in the Word of God, you cannot place your attention on. You see, so this is very important. So the first thing that the son must understand is the meaning, is the meaning of the word. What is the purpose of the word of God? What will the word do to me if I place my attention on? What is the interest? What is the purpose of the word? This is very important. You see, without that, we can only go to God because we want something. We can only go to God because we want God to attend to our earthly need. But if we come to the understanding that the, the purpose of our life, the motive of our living, the motive behind every action that we do is based on what is described in the word, what is established in the word. In other words, what is established in the gospel, then our attention will be placed on the gospel. You see, the, in every other thing that happens around, even when we are in the position of disadvantage, we know that our solution is in the word of God. So this is very, very important. We must come to that place where our heart is settled that the word of God is of utmost interest to us so that we can then place our attention on the word of God. This is very, very important because this word attention is so important. It, it's, it actually, you know, takes us away from the position of, us, of sonship. That is why he says, my son, incline unto your words, unto my words, because even as sons, even as those that God has justified, there is still the possibility that other things of interest which are earthly can take away our attention. And so, but if we understand that within us, God has placed his word, he has established his purpose, God has placed within us the motive of experiencing, of establishing everything that are to be established on earth. When we know that, we then give ourselves to the Word of God. Hallelujah. So the Word of God is so, so important, and it is that which is so needed for us in order for us to really walk the walk that God has ordained for us in Christ, because we are the sons of God. And also importantly, it is very important 
for us to also realize that the word attain and the word incline, they actually signify to be wakeful, to be watchful, to be present. So what is God telling us here? He's trying to make us understand that we should be present in the world. We must be wakeful, not sleep. Amen. We have to wake, we have to be wakeful in the word of God. Because the place where we live, the place where we are established, the place where we move is the word of God. Where we have our being is the word of God. So we are not trying to get into the word of God. Amen. We are not trying to get into the word of God. We are not forcing ourselves into the word of God. No. Here, the Bible says, attend, be attentive to the word. It means that we are already there. We are in the word. So, but we can be distracted by other things. And most importantly, the things that actually distract the believer, dis distract the sons of God, are the things of this world. The things, the external things, which are of completely less importance. And so, we are not trying to get into the world. We are only trying to wake up, to awaken unto the world where we are. We are, God is calling us to be attentive, to focus, to concentrate on the word of God. This word which is heavenly, the word which is not seeable with the physical eyes, the word which is that which we have been placed into. You see, this is why Paul makes this wonderful statement in the book of Acts 17, it says, in him, referring to Christ, referring to the word of the Father, that in him we live, we move, and we have our being. That is where we are. And if you remember, he was talking to those who were not even born again. So to tell us that from the Father's perspective, he has brought humanity through Christ in this place called Christ, where we move, we live, and we have our being. And so if we are there, we cannot do anything to get there. So what we are needed to do is to be attentive, is to awaken to where we are. So this is actually the call. So when you see the word Incline. The word incline is actually the tendency. It's talking about tendency. You see, your tendency should be to his sayings. Your preference should be to his sayings. Before you want to look onto any other thing outside of you, let your tendency, let your preference be his sayings. Let it be that which God is speaking continually unto your spirit unto your soul. And this is very, very important. So we are called to wake up. We are called to be attentive. We are called in order for us to put our concentration, you see, the concentration of the mind to that which the Word has already established. Amen. So this is the call of the believer. This is the call of the Son to attain to the Word. The word is here. You are in the word right now. You are in that place of blessing. You are in that place of abundance, the place of health. You are in the place of life. That is your, your natural habitat. That is where you have been called to live in. And that is where you are. But because your attention is on something else, you have lost the awareness of the place in which you are. This is very important. So what is God saying to us? Awaken. Awaken. Because attention is actually the word that has to do with your interest. What you esteem great. What you treasure more than others. So God says that attend to my word because you are born again by the word of God. The essence of your spirit, everything that has to do with you is the word. This is what Peter tells us 
First Peter 1, the verse 23, we are born again by the incorruptible word of God. Glory be to God. So where you live is the word. So what do you then need? You need to make the word of God your preference. You need to make the word of God your undivided attention. Glory be to God. This is so important. You see, attention is the process of concentrating the mind upon a particular activity with a view of achieving a specific subject. This is what attention is. It is, it is you concentrated. It's a process of taking your whole concentration on, you know, by the power of your mind, by the volition, by your will. You see, because attention has to do with will. You see, it, it's, it's not something you can just generate. There must be a willpower within you, you see, to take yourself away from Facebook, away from YouTube, away from, you see, the news around, and glue yourself on the Word of God, on what God has said, on what God has already established, on what the Spirit of God is communicating to you based on that which Christ has already established as who you are. Glory be to God. So this is very, very important. This is very, very important for us to then realize this, that Jesus Christ is the Word. Jesus Christ is that which the Father has made available to us in order for us to live in this world. You see, many people think that salvation is just, you know, being saved by Christ. No, that is not all. That is just one aspect of salvation. Christ Jesus saved us, but we live in Him in order to experience salvation. So it is not just Christ taking us out of where we were. It is not just Christ delivering us from our mistakenness, from our sinful nature. It is us living in Christ that brings the benefits and the profits of salvation. So salvation is us walking in Christ. So if we have received Christ, then let us therefore walk in Him. So if Christ, the Word of God, has delivered us, then let us therefore walk in Christ. So every experience, let it be by the Word of God. And so that is why we are called to pay attention. Wake up. Be present to the Word. Glory be to God. And so here we then realize that the Word of God is the source of our energy. Because if you are asked to attend to the Word, and where your attention is, is where the source of your energy are. So the Word of God is the source of my energy, the source of, the, of my power, of my strength. If we want, to want, we want to have strength in our body, strength, you know, to live the life that God has ordained in this earth, we know that the source of our strength, the source of the energy needed to move in this world is the Word of God. So then we realize that there are, there are, so, there are two sources. There are two sources of energy. There are two sources of information. Glory be to God. This is very important. It's something we need to know. And Jesus Christ, he actually, in the parable of the man that builds on the, the wise, the wise man that builds on the rock and the, the, the foolish man that builds on the sun, he actually, through that parable, shows to us that there are two sources of information. The information which he refers to as deep, the rocky information, the information that builds, the, that will embite within you the energy, the divine energy, the energy from God that makes you to move forward, 
that makes you to be invincible, that makes you to be indestructible, that makes you to live healthy and walk forward. He calls it a deed. That information is not in the surface. It's not sandy. It's a rock. Because when the wind will blow, when the storm and 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 the rain will fall, that information will always stand. Because we live in a world in which there is a lot of storms. But when you your source of energy from which your house is built is the rock, is the word of God. When your attention is completely on the word of God, no matter the storm, no matter the wind, no matter the rain, your house will stand. Your body will stand. Your finances will stand. No matter the storm, glory be to God. And so that is the reason why God is calling us to pay attention to his word. So, it's just like, for example, you see, our body, our physical body, the source of energy of our physical body is a food. That is where we derive the strength, the energy for our bodies to function accordingly. So now we may ask ourselves then the, the, the strength, you see, the source of the energy of our mind. What is it? What is the diet? That your, your soul needs in order for your soul to be full of energy and strength to move forward. Because it's all about the state of your mind. That when situation changes, will you stay in peace? Will you be joyful? Will you, will you be appreciative, thankful and all this? Will you still be friendly and lovely when things change in the outside? So what is the source of the inner strength? The strength of your soul is the information that comes from heaven. It is the heavenly information. So the word of God is not earthly. It is not in the external. You see, Paul, um, David tells us in Psalms 119, the verse 89, it says, O oh God, forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. So this information that the son is called to attain to is heavenly. It's not earthly. That is why it is so powerful. Because it is a heavenly information. It is a heavenly energy. It is that which is not of this world. Glory be to God. So we are here in this world with our physical body. But our mind, our soul... Is not supposed to be fed by the information that comes from the external world. Hallelujah. That's why we live in a very, you know, delicate time. We live in a very delicate time, you see, with all this social media stuff. So we are easily distracted. We become more earthly, though we are heavenly, though we are sons. But in our mind, we walk as those of this world. Why? Because that the energy, the information that we receive in our hearts, in our soul, are the information that comes from the activities, the events of this world. And of course, that cannot stand. This information which contains the energy of your soul cannot withstand the storm, cannot withstand the rain, cannot withstand the wind of life. So that is why God is giving us this wonderful um, uh, exhortation that we should attain to the word of God. The word of God is that which we must place our attention on. Very important. And so when we look at um, John 4, uh, John 8, I want us to look at John 8. There is something very important I want to show to you concerning the word. So as we place our emphasis on the word, you see, John 8, Jesus is speaking concerning his father. Now, this is the word speaking. This is the word speaking. The verse number 23. 
John 8, the verse 23. And he said unto them, Jesus is speaking to the Pharisees, you know, to the religious leaders. He said to them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. Glory be to God. This is the Son of God speaking. This is the position that he has brought you and I. Based on the resurrection of Jesus, we are now sons of God. He has begotten us from the dead. And so our glorious position today, the ultimate position, the most glorious position is that of sonship. So we are sons. And so he is saying that those, the Pharisees, the religious, they are beneath. He is from above. Likewise us. He says, I, ye are of this world. I am not of this world. We are not of this world. Glory be to God. If we have bore the, the nature of the earthly, we shall also bear the nature of of the heavenly. This is what Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 15, the verse 49. We have bore, he says in the past, we have bore the earthly. We have put on based on that which pertains to the earthly. And therefore, we were tossed to and fro by earthly things. But he says, now that we are in Christ, we are called to bear the image of the heavenly. So the word of God is not earthly. It is settled in heaven. So if you're, you are to settle your heart, if you are to establish your heart on this earth, it, your heart has to be heavenly. Because that is where the, you are. That is where the word of God is. You see, when Paul says that we are seated in heavenly places, of course, he's not making reference to our physical bodies. We all know that. But we read in scripture that we are in the heavens, in Christ. So what is he talking about? He's talking about the soul that you cannot see. Your soul. Your soul cannot be seen. So that your soul, where yourself is formed, your soul, where your, your, your true being, your true life is formed, is in the heaven. So Paul makes it so beautifully in Colossians, Colossians 1 and 3, the verse number 1. He says, if we are risen with Christ, so let us seek the things which are above. You see, Jesus says, I am from above. We are from above. So what should we seek then? We shouldn't seek information that is earthly. We should attain to heavenly information. And this heavenly information is contrary to the earthly information. If God says you are blessed, this is heavenly information. If God says you are healed, it is heavenly information. So when you, you look at that which God speaks from heaven with the earthly perspective, with the earthly mind, you think God is lying. But actually, the truth is spiritual. The truth has got nothing to do with the earthly information because the truth is not relative. It is absolute. And so we have been placed in the truth, the word of God. And so we are to attain, to put our interest in the truth. Job made a wonderful statement. I believe in Job 23, the verse number 12. He says, I have extinguished the commandment of your lips more than my necessary food. Glory be to God. You see, people who made a difference are those who have placed their interest on the word of God. Those who have awakened to the reality that truth 
is not outside. Truth is inside. Truth is that which they have laid hold of in their heart. Amen. Truth is the vision that no one sees that has been revealed to you based on the information from the world. So when you hold on to the truth, the world does not see. The world does not understand. But the truth can never fail. The word of God can never fail. So God is not asking us to walk into the word of God. To, to lay hold of the word of God. No, we cannot lay hold of the word of God. The word of God has to lay hold of us. So in order for that to happen, we have to attain, attain, attention is the word, is the key word here. We have to concentrate our mind on this word, that which God has already established, finished, which we all call the gospel. That's why the gospel is important. The gospel is what our soul needs. This is what we need to say yes. The gospel tells us that we are healed, we are rich, we are blessed. This is the message from heaven. This is the message of the heavenly man. And so Jesus says, ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. Then the verse 24, he says, I said therefore unto you, that ye shall die in your sins. You shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. This is so important. This is, this is beautiful. Now, Jesus is, is saying to every one of us that you will remain who you are if you don't believe that he is. Now, you will remain unchanged until you recognize that what the person you desire to be is Christ. This is what he's saying. He says you will remain in your sin if you don't wake up, if you don't become attentive to the word of God. You will remain in your mistakenness because it is your mind that is mistaken of your identity. It is the information that has been fed from the outside that gives you an identity which is erroneous, which is earthly, which is susceptible to pain, to suffering. And so when you see the word, which is Christ, and you believe that what you desire, who you desire, is that word, is that person Christ, then you come out of your sin. Glory be to God. You come out of your mistaken conception concerning yourself. So the word of God is the person you desire to be. Take this definition. The word is the person you desire to be. It says, my son, give attend to my word. Attend to the person you desire to be. Be attentive to Christ. You see, we always say that as Christ is revealed, I am revealed. This is very true. Because who, who you desire to be is who Christ is. So he says, he says here that if you believe not that I am healed, in other words, if you believe not that I am the person that you desire to be, then you remain as you are. You see, people don't experience transformation. They don't experience change because they don't accept that Christ is the person they desire to be. When you look at Christ, he's blessed. You see blessing and abundance. When you look at Christ, you see health. When you look at Christ, you see peace. You see joy. That is the man that we all quest to become. 
That is the man that your heart is longing to be. You want riches. Actually, you are aspiring to be like Christ. So Christ, the word of God, is the person that you and I are desiring to be. And so Jesus said that if you do not believe that I am the person, I am he, the person that you're desiring to be, then you will remain as you are. You will remain in your mistakenness. You will always miss the mark. So my son, says the father, attend to my word. Incline your ears unto my saying. What the father is saying, the information that he's giving to you and me, let us make it our preference. Let the tendency, the disposition of our heart be towards what the Father is saying, not what the people, the system, the event that happened in the past. Let not hear those sayings because they are speaking to us. The system is speaking to you. The circumstances of life that we're all going through. This pandemic is saying something. But it says, incline not your ears to that, but incline your ears to his sayings. God is speaking the kingdom language. He's speaking the heavenly language. He's speaking to his sons. You see, he's, he didn't say sinners attain to my words. No. The word is not for sinners. The word of God is for the sons of God. And so until you come to realize that you are no more a sinner, the death, the resurrection of Jesus Christ change your statue. Hebrews 10 the verse 14, he says he died once, he offered one sacrifice for sin, once and forever. So that one sacrifice by the sharing of his precious blood change your position. And today, you before the Father, you are not a sinner. That is not your position. That is not your statue. You are a son. Because Christ has joined you and share with you all that which he is. This is the grace of God. And so when you wake up to that truth, what do you need? Your inclination is not to yourself anymore. It's not to that which the system says. The tendency, your preferences, your attention, your interest is not in the things that are external. But all your attention is to the world because you are no more your own. You don't live for yourself. You live by the world. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. This is so beautiful. This is just so wonderful to realize that God has brought us into this glorious place. And then he said something. He says, let them not depart. Let the word not depart from thy eyes. Let them not depart from thy eyes. Here we see the power of beholding. The power of beholding. He says, let the words not depart from thy eyes. So he's actually introducing you and I to another very important principle. He talks about attention, inclination, and now he's speaking of, you know, he's speaking of beholding. So you behold that which is already so of you. So beholding is redemptive. So what you see with the eyes of your spirit redeems you from the position that you were previously there. This is very important. You see, what you see with the eyes of your spirit is redemptive because it takes you away from your previous position. If you saw yourself as a pauper, 
If you saw yourself as somebody who can, who is not worthy, who cannot do anything, when you then get into the Word of God, just like Paul tells us, that with open eyes we behold the glory of God, which is the Word, God's opinion concerning us. So when you do that, when you do that, what happens? You are taken away from the position you were previously and you've been established on that which the world or that which you are beholding. He says, let them not depart. Let it not go away. Hold on to it. So beholding necessitate a discipline. It means every day, every moment when you wake up, you are beholding that which the world says of you. Amen. It's not a one, one time thing. You don't just come once and say you're blessed and says you are a son of God and it's over. No, you stay on that assumption. You stay on that truth. Until your whole mental disposition has been shifted from that of being disadvantaged to that glorious position that the world shows you. So whenever God wants to do something, he always brings us to a place where he asks the question, what do you see? What do you behold? You see, even Paul, Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man be in Christ is a new creation, that is a fact. You are in Christ, a new creation. But he says, old things are passed away. Behold, behold, that is the word. Now behold, all things have become new. All things have become new. So your beholding brings you into a new position, into a new state. Very important. We are new creation. So everything about us is new. But you have to behold that which the word of God presents to you as your new position. You know more a sinner, you know more a curse. You know more a failure. So when you look at the word, the word will never show you that you are disadvantaged, you are deficient. The word will never show you that you are of no worth. The word will show you of himself. It is a revelation of Jesus and the signature of the whole message of God to man. Is the fact that we are in Him. We are in Christ. So when the Word, which is Christ, is revealed, you and I, we are revealed in Him. Glory be to God. Thank you, Father. So the experience, there are two experiences when it has to do with the Word. You see, the first experience, you experience that which you are beholding. Amen? You have to experience what you are beholding within you. Because beholding is not physical. Christ is not, is not known after the flesh. It's not, it's the information concerning Christ is not outside. It's a revelation from the Father. It's a deep information. It's a rock. And so when that information comes to you, it gives you an inner experience. So that's why when you are beholding, you become that which you behold. It's redemptive. Don't let it go. Even if the outward appearance, your outward appearance hasn't changed yet. No. It is the insight which is important. So what you are beholding in terms of who you are will definitely be manifested in the outside. So the word of God is not just memorizing scripture. The word of God is the person of Christ. It's not just words written in this book called the Bible. The Bible helps us. It's a catalog describing 
who the word of God is. And so when we read the word, when we listen to the word, we need to see the person of Christ. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So you experience in your beholding what you desire to experience in reality. What do you want to experience in reality? You want to experience blessing. You want to experience health. But first, experience in your beholding. That's why he says, let them not depart from your eyes. See yourself yield. So what you want to experience in reality, you know, in the outside, you must first experience it in your beholding, in your imagination. So in other words, there must be a mental shift. There must be a shift of your belief. What you previously believed about yourself must change. That you must enter into that experience where you really know you were changed. You used to look yourself down. You used to see yourself as a victim. And suddenly when you when you are introduced by the Spirit to the Word of God, you see the person of Christ and you identify with the one in whom you see as you. That is experiencing. That is a glorious experience. And that experience nobody sees is within you. It's in your imagination. It's in your perception. And if that is the case, then you will then that which you've experienced in the inside will become a reality. You see, the question people may ask, but how will it become a reality? Should I do something? You see, that is the place where we want to urge God, we want to, we want to help Him. No, beholding is redemptive. You only need to begin to then walk according to the new perception. If you are blessed. You act as a blessed person. Glory be to God. And so from there, you begin to attract. That state is magnetic. It attracts lights. The state of your heart attracts that which is the content of that state. If your heart is full of joy, if your heart is full of peace, that is what you attract. That is what you will actually, you know, project around you. Even if things are not working around you, even if, you know, the situations of life in terms of what people experience is bad, you will be an exception because what is inside of you is that which guards, is that which actually determines the environment in which you live. So we are called to wake up to where we are, which is the word of God, to incline our ears to his sayings and to let these words be in the midst of us and let it not depart from our eyes. Then he says, keep them in the midst of thy heart for they are life unto those that find them and help to all their flesh. Amen. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. The heart is the place where the word is kept. But the word is kept in the heart as emotion. In the heart is not kept as a vision. It's not kept as something that you see, something that you've imagined. It's not kept in the heart as a revelation. It's kept as an emotion. Now remember every word of God. The word of God carries with it an emotion, a feeling. So how do you keep the word of God? Because the word of God is kept in the heart as emotion, as peace, as joy. That's why Jesus said many times, he says, this word that I've said unto you, that you may have joy. And that your joy may be full. John 15, 11. He didn't say the word I have said to you so that you may be knowledgeable. So that you may have a lot of information. No. The word is taught in the heart as an emotion. That is the reason in 
Jeremiah 15, the verse 16. Jeremiah says, Thy word have I found, and I do eat them. And thy word was in me, in my heart, the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Thy word was the joy and rejoicing. You see, not, not a package of information. You know, people may pride themselves of knowing more about what the world says. But that is not the point. The point is, what feeling does the word give you? What is in your heart? So how do you keep the word in your heart? You keep the word in your heart through the feelings of the word. So when you eat the word of God, in other words, you attend to the word of God, you incline your ears to his saying, and you let it not depart from your eyes. That is what it means to eat spiritually. And as you do that, you, the word is established in your heart as joy, as peace, as fulfillment, as satisfaction as perfection, as completeness, as wholeness, as healing, as riches. So these are the feelings that you have. It's not, that is why somebody who has, who has been blessed by the word of God is not prideful, is joyful, is peaceful. So the blessing that God gives to us, he adds no sorrow. People are blessed. In terms of material things. But their blessing is added with sorrow. They are full of sorrow. Full of hardship. Full of misfortune. But when God blesses. is without sorrow. Why? Because the blessings of God. Will establish within your heart. The emotion. The feelings of joy and peace. And fulfillment. And satisfaction. Glory be to God. This is the power of the word, the power of Christ that we are called to behold. Amen. So do you want to see a Christian who has been transformed, a Christian who has grown? It's not the content of his mind. It's not the, the ability of imbibing and quoting scripture. No, it is the quality of feelings and emotion that he exhibits in every situation. No matter what happens, he's peaceful. No matter what happens, he's joyful. Why? Because he's beholding who he is. Notwithstanding what is happening. He's beholding. That is where his eyes are. That is where his attention is. He knows who he is. You see, Jesus was never moved by any earthly, any external situation. Why? Because he was loaded by the sayings of the Father. His ears were completely, continually inclined to what the Father is saying, not what the circumstances are saying. The storm will rage against us. There will be turbulence in this sea that we live in called the world. But do you hear do you get your sayings from those thoughts or your ears are inclined to what the Father is saying within you? We look at the situation of the world today and there is great concern, there is great fear. The information that comes is sapped, wants to sap life out of us. But where do you incline your ears to? Where are you attentive to? That is the ultimate question. But God hasn't kept us, He hasn't kept us in the dark. He says the word. I've not only saved you by the word, but I've left the word with you so that you can live in the word and by the word. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He says, for they are life unto those that find them and help to all their flesh. The word of God is life to those that find them. Jesus said, I am come that they may have life and that we may have it more abundantly. 
He came that we may have life. You cannot have what you don't believe. This is important. So the life God is saying is that until you believe, you cannot have that life. So in order for you to have, you must first receive. Now this is a principle I want to show you here. For you to have, you must first receive. Because that which you are to have has been already given. God has given his life. There is nothing God is withholding. The word of God is, has been given to us. It's a gift, life, that comes from God, the Christ, who is our life. is a gift. So in order for us to have, we must receive. And you cannot receive until you desire. Amen. So, you see that it is chronological. You see, you believe that you have received, then you have. But in order for you to believe that you receive, you must first desire. You desire what is. Because desire is placed on you to awaken you to that which is already yours. So the word of God, everything that the word entails is, is, has been given to you and I. So our desire wakes up us all to that which is already true of us. And when we wake up to the truth concerning us, we then receive and as a consequence, we have. And so here, Solomon says, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. That is actually the point here. You see, keep your heart. How do you keep your heart? You keep your heart with all diligence, because the heart is a place where the issues of life comes out. So the heart is where our emotions are kept. It is where you feel. And so the word of God actually gives to us the feeling that defines who we are at a particular time. So, every day we are called to attend to the Word. Every day we are called to incline to His saints. Every day we are called to let His Word not depart from our eyes. Every day is a call. Because when the word is loaded and established within our hearts, it is established as emotions. So every morning, before you start your day, you need to load your mind. You need to load your heart with divine information. Don't look on the, the news or look at any other information or read or listen to any other thing. That which is important, preference, the, your preference on a daily basis is the word. And so when you hold on to the word, your day is secured because you then walk through the day with the heavenly mood, with the heavenly feelings, with the nature, the atmosphere of heaven. Hallelujah.